Today, we're gonna to talk about 23 items that you can declutter in 2023 to help you live a more clutter-free life. Let's hop right in. Number one, magnets. I actually don't like storing things on the front of the fridge, things like bills and artwork. So that really lends itself to not needing magnets. But if you have magnets that are broken or that you just don't use anymore, you have an excess, get rid of them. Cracked or broken utensils. This especially applies to wood. If you have put your wood in the dishwasher, I've made this mistake too, it can actually crack your wood. So go ahead and check, see if you have anything cracked or broken as far as like serving spoons, wooden spoons, and get rid of anything that's ruined. Spices that you never use. When you buy packs of spices, they generally come with all kinds of flavors. See what you don't use? I never use the dry mustard. Little ketchup packets, little sauce packets, to-go straws, the kinds of things that you get from restaurants that get shoved into the back of a drawer. Every time I think of ketchup, I remember the time when I was five years old and I was at a restaurant with my dad and I slipped in a huge, puddle of ketchup. I couldn't get up out of it and I was just rolling around covering myself but the employees had spilled a huge jug of ketchup. I was a ketchup monster. I will never forget that day. Lids and jars that you don't use. Jars are great for storage, especially if you have a small pantry, but if you've not used them and they're just shoved to the back, that's normally where I find things that need to be decluttered, in the back. If they're just shoved back there, go ahead and pull them out, either use them or declutter them. Check out your throw blankets. This is the perfect time of year to see if you have any blankets, throws, you could even include sheets and bedding that have holes, stains beyond repair. If they're in pretty good condition and you just don't use them, donate them to a shelter. Any plants that you can't revive that are sick and dead, go ahead and just move on. Get another plant, start over, <laughs> it's okay. DVDs, who else has a huge stash, a collection of DVDs and has a hard time getting rid of it. My husband has not wanted me to get rid of them, so I'm gonna respect him, but I cannot wait for the day <laughs> that I can declutter our DVDs. We have streaming services now, and unless you just really have like an attachment to watching things on physical copies, I don't see any reason to keep them. Let me know if you have your DVD collection still. Games and puzzles with missing or broken pieces. For a while I debated, should you declutter these? Should you recycle them? You know, declutter as in give to the Goodwill, the donation center. I'm just gonna say recycle these. Unwanted or unused candles and air fresheners. I found a couple candles that were just down to the nubs and I kept it. <laughs> I have no idea why. If you have candles that need to be thrown out, even if you didn't like the scent, maybe this is something you could actually give to a donation center. But any kind of air fresheners, maybe you're going more toxic free and you just wanna get rid of these. This is a great time of year to go through your house and just get these out. Let me know, are you more into essential oils or burning candles? We went through our basement recently and I found several broken picture frames. We probably broke them because they were in storage for so long, which is one of the problems with having a lot of storage. Picture frames or any mirrors or wall art. Go ahead and just recycle these materials. You don't need to hold on to them. I've noticed with things that are broken, we generally tend to have the intention of fixing it, but we don't in reality get to it. That's at least been the truth for me. Most makeup is only good for about 12 months, especially like liquids and creams. So go through your makeup, make sure there's nothing expired. If you use expired makeup, it can cause breakouts and skin irritation. It's just not usually something I wanna mess with. You can also just write with a Sharpie the next time you buy what day you bought the makeup and that way you'll know what is actually 12 months from now. Towels and rugs. When I first moved into this house, I was so excited to get new rugs. I'm gonna be honest, they didn't work out for my space. I noticed they were always wet and they always smelled like mildew because they were in the bathroom next to the shower. I ended up decluttering almost all of my rugs, definitely the ones in the bathroom, and I just kept a couple in my house. So if you have any towels or rugs that are just not in good shape or not working out, now is the time to get rid of them. 
Here's one I rarely think of, and that is toothbrushes. There is a reason the dentist gives you a new toothbrush every time you go in for a cleaning, and that's because toothbrushes, when they wear down the bristles, they stop being so effective. Also, they harbor bacteria. So remember to get yourself a new toothbrush. New year, new toothbrush. Nail polishes that are separated, sticky, that you never wear, that are old, go ahead and just get rid of them. I noticed, at least for me, I, I rarely paint my nails, and when I do, I gravitate toward the same colors. So anything that I haven't worn in the last six months to a year, I go ahead and get rid of. Scarves, belts, and bags. I used to have a massive scarf collection. I think they were just really in style, super popular, and I loved them. This means I accumulated so many. I think I had around 20 scarves when I finally decided to whittle my collection down to one. So go through, see if you have belts that you haven't worn, scarves that are out of style that you don't use, and then obviously bags, tote bags, pool bags, purses, anything like that can go ahead and get decluttered now. The beginning of a new year is a great time to go through your shoes and your family's shoes, see what people have outgrown, see what bottoms are completely worn through, what shoes kind of pinch people's feet, what do you not wear? Go through your shoes. This is one of those really, really quick decluttering projects that only takes a few minutes. Normally your kids know exactly what shoes they're not wearing and of course you do as well. Any pillow in your house, whether this be a throw pillow, a decorative pillow, or a pillow that you sleep on, check them out. <laughs> they can get really flattened, really stained, and need to get decluttered. I have a couple of pillows that I've had to replace recently because my dog completely chewed through a couple of mine and then I had stains beyond repair. So pull the pillowcases off your pillows, especially the ones that you sleep on, and see if you can do treatments on them to revive them and remove the stains. But if they're really flattened down, it might just be time for new ones. Kids stuffed animals. I just have noticed that these take up a pretty large volume if you're not careful and like put a limit on how many your kids are allowed to have. See which ones your kids wanna keep. This is a great thing for you to do with them, but try and whittle it down to the ones that will fit in a designated bin or container. Art supplies, see if you've got old paints, dried out markers, broken crayons. You can do DIYs with those. So maybe don't declutter the broken crayons, do a fun project, but go through your art supplies. This is a great time to take inventory, see what can be decluttered, and then make notes of what might need to be replaced. Old phones and phone chargers. I don't know why we have a tendency to keep these. Sometimes we have old photos on the phone that need to be transferred, and I have been neglecting that myself. I have an old phone that's like completely useless. It's cracked, it's broken, the pixels are all wrong, but I do have photos on there. So this is the year, transfer the photos, that's one of my goals, and then get rid of the phone. It's not worth anything. And then chargers that go along with it, especially if they're broken. Wrapping paper and gift wrap. Since we have the holidays, this is the perfect time to go through and get rid of any wrapping paper that is wrinkled beyond repair, that you know you're not gonna use next year, that when you were cutting to wrap presents this year, it just drove you crazy because it kept tearing. Don't keep that. Get rid of it and buy thicker paper <laughs> next year. So go through all of your like wrapping paper and gift bags and see what you can declutter out of your space. I'd like to give you a couple of tips on decluttering your home. So when I initially decluttered our space, I decluttered about 85% of our family's possessions. It was amazing. It did not happen overnight. So be patient with yourself. But my tip is to work off of a master list. I wrote down every single area and category of our home that I wanted to declutter. And I just went through every single day every single weekend, whenever I had time, and I worked off of that master list. This took me almost a year to declutter my entire space. So you see these decluttering videos on YouTube and they look really motivating and it looks like people are making a lot of progress really, really quickly. In some cases that's true, but most often it is a slow and steady race. One of my other best tips is to get the stuff out of your house immediately. Even if this means just putting it in the trunk of your car, can you let this stuff lay around your house, even if it's in bins or bags ready for the donation? I've noticed it is tempting to go back through, second guess your decisions and not make as much progress as it causes you to backstep by pulling things back 
into your home. Also, when you take these things out of your house, you have made visible progress. The space is physically cleaner and it's just so much more motivating when you see that you've made this real, physical, visible progress. Nothing is more motivating than progress. So just begin. Check out my playlist here if you'd like to see more. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.